Hello, I'm John Eldridge, and welcome to the Ransomed Heart audio podcast. For more information on Ransomed Heart Ministries, our resources, and events, please visit us online at www.ransomedheart.com. It was such a fascinating process to write this book together because Sam and I would get together in my office at home and we have our book laid out on my writing board in my office and we would just talk through real life, real life stuff, the the issues that you were going through, Sam, the issues that you knew all of your male friends were going through as well, all your peers. And, you know, we talk about how do you think about college? We want to talk about how do you think about money and work? And and then this one came up. Yeah, it wasn't long before the girl came up. It kind of felt like almost not soon enough because the conversations are always pulled there. Exactly. So whatever you guy's asking, whatever you guy's wondering, whatever you guy's thinking about, I've either got this girl and know what I've got myself into or – how do I find the right girl? All that sort of stuff. Yeah, right. Real stuff. So welcome back to the Ransomed Heart Podcast. John and Sam Eldridge here in the release of our new book, Killing Lions, A Guide to the Trials Young Men Face. So excited about this. And today I want to read to you some portions from our chapter on women. Chapter 3, The Book of Love. She didn't say it. I only thought she said it. So really, it was my thought, my words, and not hers. How could I confuse, I love you, with, may I take your order? Jared Kintz. We called it the turkey drop, and according to Urban Dictionary, we weren't the only ones slinging around the idiom. It is defined as a situation of freshmen who try dating long distance once they enter college, who then find the appeal gone by Thanksgiving, wherein one or the other is dumped. Thus, the turkey drop. I read somewhere that 95% of long-distance couples don't make it past the first year of college. You know that I came to college with a girlfriend that I had been dating for some time, close to two years, and like many other incoming freshmen with significant others, my time was torn in two. On the one hand, I dove into all the initiation stuff, beach barbecues and section meetings, but my attention was never fully there. I was defined by a relationship that existed in the world of texting and video chat, and when other freshmen went to lunch together, I sat in my room waiting for a phone call. I didn't have much of an identity on my own. I hadn't for years. I knew that I wanted out, and shortly after my turkey drop, I found myself single and happy. Well, happy a month or so later. It was only in that season after the breakup that I began to realize that I had been bouncing from girl to girl since I was 12. As in, the most time I would spend single or not pursuing anybody was about a month. So for the first time in six years, I decided not to pursue a girl. I wanted to know what it was like to have an identity outside a coupling. I didn't want to be Sam and Christina or Sam and Liz anymore. Just Sam. But being just Sam took some adjustment. I didn't realize it at first, but I had opened the door to a whole truckload of issues that were just waiting to pour out. In the year that followed, I began to realize just how much of a black sheep I had felt in our family and how much I let that define my actions. I got on medication for my mood. I drank and wandered into friends' rooms to plop down on their couches and vent all I was thinking. Meanwhile, I was head over heels for a female friend of mine, the girl no one got to date. And when I finally confessed my feelings to her, I was added to the list of rejected boys. In reaction to being told I was not good enough, not verbatim, but by clear action in the loss of a friend. I went abroad the following semester, my junior year, and somewhere inside me decided that I wasn't going to be not good enough anymore. So I played with the other girls on the trip. I mean like a tool plays with girls. And quickly developed a new reputation. Sam is trouble. I would be lying to you if I said I didn't like it. For the first time in a long time, I was not defined by the girl I was with because I was never really with any one girl and I was not defined as being a loser. I was trouble. Watch out for him, because he will wreck your heart. Never being good enough for girl after girl is so emasculating. In the quiet inner regions of the heart, you end up believing you're just not worth it, not man enough, destined to be the nice guy friend, but never the boyfriend, never the lover, 
No wonder you decided to break out of that. No longer defined by the girl, and yet still totally defined, simply now as the dangerous one. To be honest, it still sounds a lot like the boy to me. You think that does? There are a lot of boys out there, especially in the dating world. During the first week of college, our dorm's resident director pulled the guys aside and told us, you have now entered the Valley of the Golden Wildflower. All these boys, now in the meadows of college beauties, started dating like fools, hopping from one shallow relationship to another, or wishing they could. I had a friend named Dale who avoided all women, focusing instead on his studies of ancient Greek or his velvet underground vinyl collection. He wanted a relationship, even fixated on a crush all year long over this blonde in his Latin class. But he could never make a move. The whole realm of college love felt like a poorly written reality show. One of my housemates got himself in a nightmare. Everyone around him knew is not a good thing, even told him so. But though my friend was a good guy, he could never be the man and walk away. They would break up over and over again, but he kept going back. She had her hooks in him, and it took years before he could finally get them out. At that point, it wasn't about knowing if she was healthy or not. He knew she wasn't but he felt that he needed to be her hero and help make her healthy. He didn't have the courage to leave, but he didn't have the strength to come to terms with the fact that by staying in the relationship, no one was getting any better. Fortunately for my housemate, he was able to push through the awful experience of a breakup before things moved too deep. I don't think it's all the boy. I think most guys down in their hearts wanted to step up and play the part of the hero, the man, but they blew it in their own way by offering too much too soon. These are the guys who knew that their girlfriends longed to be consoled or pursued, and so, wanting to do what they knew she was hoping for, they told the girl they loved her, or made other romantic promises, and the relationship got too close. So many times it was to the wrong girl. The fortunate ones ended in tears a year later. Others may end in legal documents. Another friend really liked a girl who was a couple years younger than him. She was playful and attractive, and she drew out his desire to be the hero. Well, as soon as they started dating, she started acting different. She went full-blown crazy after only a few days, literally stalking him and texting him every hour to find out where he was, fluctuating her emotions almost as frequently in order to control him. She seemed amazing, but turned out to be holding a lot of issues inside that only reared their heads when he moved toward her. He finally broke it off for good. I feel like most guys really come down to wanting to know the answer to one question pertaining to women. What the heck is going on? Exactly. The very question men twice your age are still asking. The answer is simple and profound. You are a man. She is a woman. You are history. You are irresistibly and inexplicably drawn by some force field toward an alien world holding within it the ecstasies of Eden and the hopelessness of hell. This is Love 101. I'm not trying to be clever. I am speaking sober truth. When love is good, it is wonderful. The whole world seems to glow under the light of a golden sun. When love goes bad, the darkness covers the rest of your life. It can eclipse your heart for a long time. But of course, we are made for love. Romance matters far more than money, more than career, even more than calling. Love is literally the heartbeat of the universe. Santiago learns the language that everyone on earth was capable of understanding in their heart. It was love, something older than humanity, more ancient than the desert. So let's get three things straight from the start. First, of course you want to hook up. Nothing on the planet has the power to reduce a man to a bowl of noodles like the presence of a woman he finds attractive. Femininity is powerful medicine. Try and read a book at the beach. It's mighty distracting. This isn't just testosterone and the urge to pass along your seed. That is yet another example of the world, fouling something beautiful with one of its scientific explanations. Feminine allure is soul craft, my son. Back in the origins of our story, in the midst of a spellbound sleep, woman was drawn from our side and none of us have recovered. We have been looking for the missing goddess all our lives. You must come to terms with this. We are haunted by Eve, by the design of God. 
the guy who pretends he's not has either killed his soul or he has other things he'll want to sort out. It isn't now, nor has it ever been, good for man to be alone, meaning without a woman. A rare few may be called to celibacy, but most of us are meant to do the rest of our lives with a woman. Second, of course it's confusing. You have more in common with an aardvark than you do with the daughters of Eve. Meeting a girl, you might just as well have been handed the code of Hammurabi to decipher. This is actually good news. You're not just an idiot, the clueless dude. God created Eve as a mystery. How wonderful. Frustrating as the mystery can be, you don't really want to grow bored after two weeks, do you? Just when you think you've figured out women or a woman, she changes the landscape on you. Relating to a woman will forever keep us on our toes. That's a good thing. One of the reasons makeup sex can be wildly good. When all is predictable, men go wandering. Now, by saying she's a mystery, I do not mean forever beyond our understanding. Not at all. Flowers work. Love notes work. (laughs) There is a reason. Guys will read manuals on motorcycle engines and e-trading, but never an article on femininity. Do not be like those fools. Love is going to go a lot better if you'll learn about the feminine heart. And last, you do not want to dink around with this. Not here. Not in the arena of love. There's no casual practicing here. No driving range. No batting cages. Somebody's going to get hurt. And those hurts can be devastating. There's no such thing as recreational dating. Loving a woman is something like those guys who kayak over waterfalls. You want to get this right. When it's good with Eve, it's glorious. But there are an awful lot of divorced couples out there staggering through life like victims of a terrible accident, concussive, wondering what happened, where it all went wrong. Love matters. Human hearts matter. As we move deeper into adulthood, the stakes get higher every year. Now that you're deep into the warrior lover stage, surely you felt the growing pressure to get love right. That pressure kicked in senior year. All the jokes about an MRS degree and ring by spring or your money back had sunk in a little more than people wanted to admit. It may sound silly, but I knew a whole house of guys who were depressed because they were finishing up their time in college without girlfriends. Their fear probably came through the quiet assumption that finding someone, let alone the right someone, seems a lot harder to pull off in the outside world. Guys don't always want to meet girls in a bar because it says something about the kind of girl she is. But then we aren't exactly running in circles where there are a plethora of women who seem right for whatever reason. Then there is the fear of committing. One of my close friends falls into the group of millennials scarred by the divorce generation so many of my peers had for parents. Our parents, or our parents' friends, or our friends' parents, didn't fight in a jungle or take a beachhead. They fought in courtrooms. Now their children don't want to touch marriage with a 10-foot pole. Why would they? Fear drives them back from relationships, as does years of first-hand heartbreak. And while we are talking about reasons not to get into relationships, does a guy need to feel established before going after the girl? Pursuing your career and gaining financial security feels like having your feet underneath you. But when does that security come? Ten years from now? Twenty? Will it ever? According to the Pew Research Center, millennials are marrying later in many cases. On the other hand, it seems to me that Christian couples are marrying earlier. What's left are two different peer groups, one pushing marriage off into their 30s, the other getting married the weekend after graduation. When is love real and not just infatuation? How do we move strongly towards women and when? It really feels like starting all over every time you meet someone. It's an exhausting process of finding out enough about them to see if you should date, redefining what dating even looks like, then figuring out how far to take dating before you jump ship or sail off into the sunset, which you hope is not off the edge of the world. The stakes just feel a lot higher the older you get. I have a friend named Derek. He went to South America to teach English after he graduated from college. While he was abroad, he met a beautiful young woman from New Zealand who was also teaching. They fell fast for each other, but because she had already committed to starting a graduate program in the fall, they chose not to pursue a relationship. And when their teaching contracts ended, they went their separate ways. 
Well, when Derek moved home, he crashed in his brother's attic and didn't come out for a couple of months. When I talked to him the other day, he had finally moved out and started working at a farm in the middle of nowhere. He sounded just as miserable as when he'd stepped off the plane. Now we're at the heart of the matter. So we have to call time out. We have to pause the conversation because you've hit upon something critical. We're trying to answer questions about love without first settling a deeper and far more urgent matter, identity, knowing who you are, not just as a human being, but as a man. Eve is going to test you, as you have already discovered. And until there's a settledness in you, an inner steadfastness, the storms of relationship are going to toss you around like a toy boat, maybe even sink your ship, as it did your friend Derek. Let's hit the pause button on love and romance for just a moment and push into the deeper issue of why men don't feel like men around women. Did that one leave you hanging, folks? (laughs) We did that on purpose because we realized that we can't continue the conversation about love and women and the heart of a young man, the heart of a young woman, until we get into another issue, which we're going to hit on next week. You've been listening to the Ransomed Heart Podcast with John and Sam Eldridge reading from our new book, Killing Lions. So excited about this and so excited about the Killing Lions films that are available online at killinglions.com.